Hello everybody and welcome to the Darkest Dungeon with your choice, Slow Wolf! So this game has been making its rounds and everything and I finally have access to it and I think enough knowledge to be able to play it for you guys. Uh, we're going to make a series out of this and we're going to go ahead and start a brand new top- Don't, don't worry about that one, that one's- <laughs> that was not a thing. Let's go ahead and call this one the uh, Slow Wolf Estate. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, and then clickety click click. Nope, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, whatever. But it's an RPG with roguelike elements, uh, which is quite good. Uh, we're going to go ahead now and move on forward. The story is that we are the heir to a vast and cursed fortune, whatever, I don't care. And we get to inherit this estate, um, which is made out of rubble and broken hopes and shame and terribleness. What we're going to end up trying to do is bring it back to its former glory, explore the darkest depths of the darkest dungeon, and eventually uh, bring light back to the land. Now, that's easier said than done, especially in this game, where for the vast majority of the time, you're just trying to make the best of a bad situation. It says that at the very beginning of the game, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, so yes, I stole that. But, uh, we're going to do that today. Now, the game itself is quite simple. Oh. Yes, I know how to nav navigate maps. The, the game itself is quite simple. It's a roster where you have RPG elements, you do turn-based strategy, and you make the best of a bad situation. It's not so hard. Uh, we just crashed, or at least these two heroes, our highwayman and Renal, our crusader, uh, just crashed along the road here, and we're going to move forward and attempt Brigands to... Brigands have run up these lanes. Keep to the side path. The hamlet uh -huh. is just ahead. Alright, so brigands have made their way around here. We're gonna have to deal with the brigands. We don't like the brigands. Ah, look! A brigand! Oh no! He's surprised! Let us murder him dead! Uh, yes, kill the enemy. I know how to do that. Stunning blow! We're gonna go ahead and make sure that he is stunned. Uh, so that way he cannot do anything. Then finally, when he gets his own chance to do a turn, we're gonna go ahead and stab him. Uh, he's gonna do him some more damage. He resisted the bleed effect. He is still stunned. Um, and a bunch of other stuff. Let's just go ahead and open his vein one more time. So if you get lucky with the bleed, it's not gonna. Oh, it does work. But where chances are, yeah, he's gonna die from it. So, yay, go us! We got a kill, we got some gold. Call it a day. Moving forward, we see a tent. Let's go ahead and explore it. Yes, curios, whatever. Let's go ahead and. The brigands left valuables. What did they leave? leave some gold. Yay! There is I'm gonna go in here now. In forgotten places. And we're gonna get a bigger brigand. Oh An shit! All right, now this is going to be a bit of a longer message. fight, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do take aim to increase his aim and his crit, so that way he doesn't miss nearly as much. As for this guy, uh, I could go ahead and give myself a little bit more torchlight and protect him. That might be a decent idea, actually, to reduce the damage he's about to take. All right, now that they're not surprised, let's actually go ahead and do some shot. Uh, let's go ahead and shoot him. It's going to miss, because fuck you, that's why. And that's kind of what the point of this game is. Uh, it's just kind of a giant fuck you the vast majority of the time. We're going to hit him. It's actually going to stun him, which is really good. Uh, which is going to take a lot less damage. He's going to go ahead and shoot us for a zero? Okay! That's that's awesome. I'm really happy. That doesn't normally happen. He's going to go ahead and do blanket fire. That's actually going to hit us for damage for once. And although it's not much, the rain of whips following immediately afterwards is going to hurt our highwayman. He's now bleeding. That's not good. We're going to go ahead and try to take another pistol shot at this guy in the back. Boom! One shot, one kill! Oh, that was cool. That doesn't happen all the time. We're going to go ahead and stun this guy now. And it's going to crit him too. Hopefully stun him. Nope, no stun. Um... Which would have been ideal, because that would have avoided more damage. Not that we really need to worry about damage at this point. We're going to go ahead and pistol shot him. Uh, it's going to deal a little bit of damage. Punishment's just going to hit our guy in the front, but because he's a little bit tankier than the guy in the back, or he normally was, I guess the Bulwark of Faith wore off. Uh, we're going to go ahead and smite the guy now, because that just does more damage. Bam, he's almost done. Now, turn 5 now. I could open Veins, which has a minus 15 damage mod, or I can pistol shot, which has a minus 25 damage mod. We're going to open Veins, because it does do more damage. Although slightly. Hopefully it will make him bleed. It does not make him bleed. We are just going to go ahead and smite him at this point. And hopefully that hits. It does. It's going to kill him. And we are going to go ahead and take this first mission with very little bad to say about it. We're going to take all that business. And we're going to open this chest. We're going to use the Highwayman just in case it's trapped. It is trapped. But the Highwayman has a better chance of resisting it. So that's good for us. Uh, we got nothing left in this dungeon to do. So we're going to go ahead and complete the quest. That's kind of how every mission works out. Except... Um, that's only half the game. The other half of the game is managing your resources, which happen to be people and the, uh, estate that you are back at home. Now, let's see. Renault just got evasive, which is good, and Dismas is now hard-skinned, which is fantastic. We got no negative side effects, which do happen, uh, when you level up. Sometimes they develop certain quirks or psychoses, which force them to just 
be less than what you'd like them to be. Each one of these characters ends up becoming a character Welcome of their home. own. Yes, 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 I know. We got some stuff. It's cool. This squalid okay, that's great. These corrupted so this is our highlight. Uh, the sanitarium is one of the places that we go to to cure, to like, negative side effects that are psychoses and such. Um, it is locked up until we do more missions. As with the tavern and the abbey, which are places where you reduce stress, that's the thing that's gonna pop up in, uh, the end of this episode. Same with the guild, the blacksmith, you need more quests. To start off with things, this is the cutscene place. Like, this is where you can go to check out cutscenes. Um, and just revisit the story, which is nice. This is the graveyard, for when your heroes inevitably here, die. This guy's a fucker, you're not gonna like him. Earth. Uh, oh, not only does he laugh at your dead oblivion. heroes, but on top of that, he ends up taking up spaces in your abbey and your tavern, but we'll talk about that later. For starters, Women, let's go ahead and men, recruit some sons of bitches. Let's go get Pithu, Fools and let's get Olbear as well. Um, two of them are level one healers, the no big deal. Okay, would you stop talking over me? Come on. Uh, let's go ahead and increase our available heroes by one, by two. Great now, the next time that we come back here, we'll have more heroes, here, which will hopefully allow us in the to and effectively ran. recruit a brand new lineup. Now, it's getting to be nighttime. Let's go ahead and embark on our first actual mission. Now, we've only got one mission. It's the tutorial mission. It's going to give us some bonuses, which is Your nice. Uh, let's hope that we do better than we've done in the past. In all honesty, we've had some pretty bad luck in the past um, when it comes to these things. And it's a little bit frustrating. Usually on the first mission, I end up losing a character. The Not my favorite. Okay, Measured I understand. That's great. Now, let's go ahead and buy some Later. food. In blood. Um, I'm thinking 12 should be good, just in case. Two shovels, eight torches, uh, a band-aid, and you know what? I like our profit margins, let's go ahead and buy a holy water and a blight thingy as well. That that should that should do us. These are This is a lot of resources, and honestly, I never normally use that many. But let's go ahead and embark on this quest to start off with things. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and show you guys the combat and the actual exploration part of it. This is, again, about half of the game is doing this stuff. It takes a little while to get the through, but it is back. important. And what better place to begin than the seat of our noble line? All right, so to start things off, uh, this is our map. Our mission is to complete 100% of room battle. So we have to go to every room where there's a fight and fight it out. We're going to go and move to the first room. We have a decent amount of torchlight, so let's go ahead and move forward. We've got all these items ready to help us out. And let's hope that we don't get ambushed. Uh, let's go ahead and get the highwayman to open this up. And the contents are ours. What did we get? 50 gold. Eh, not much, but it's something at least. Now there's an Iron Maiden. Um, certain things can unfortunately cause issues with your characters. I'm not sure who should be opening an Iron Maiden at this point in the game. Honestly, I'm tempted not to. But let's go ahead and try it out. Stashed loot! Okay, we got lucky. We got another shovel and a bust. I like busts. Bust is important. Hey, look, it's all about. Okay, let's kill them. No one got surprised. But that's fine. Now, seeing as I could grape shot blast the two front, the front three, that would be a pretty good move, I think. Let's end this as quickly as possible. Ah, uh, crap, that sucked. Uh, he's gonna go ahead and nibble the person in the back, which kind of sucks. And she's stunned, which really blows. Uh, what do we do here then? Go ahead and toss out a plate grenade or emboldening vapors. That might be an idea. Let's go ahead and give this guy emboldening vapors. That'll buff his damage. She was stunned. She's now buffed against stuns, which is great. Grave nibble, please don't stun him. You assholes. Yes, he resisted. And she's going to get spat on, which sucks. So we're taking already a lot of damage off of this because we haven't had anybody really hit anything yet. She was stunned. He, he did a buff and his grape shot missed. But this is where it all turns around. We're going to go ahead and zealous accusation. That's going to kill the two front assholes at the beginning. That's going to be great for us. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and open up her veins, hopefully causing a bleed. Yep, that should kill the spider when it goes. Happily, it's not going quite yet. Curing blades nice and all, but I really just want to heal myself. So let's go ahead and do that. I uh, only healed myself for three, but at least it's something for the next fight. I could go ahead and just cut her open, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. The enemy crumbles. Although, in hindsight, I probably should use Battlefield Medicine on her, so that way she would stop being blighted and take damage. But, you know, them's the breaks. Before we enter this room, we're going to go ahead and light another torch, light, and we are going to go on in. Safety. And surprises? Yeah, there's a surprise. Did we surprise them? No, we got surprised somehow with Max fucking Torchlight. Don't ask me how. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move Reynold right in the f right in the front. Tempting Goblet's going to hit our... Di our is going to hit Dismas. Uh, Eldritch Push is going to push him back, likely, unless he resists, which he does, thankfully. Graveyard Slash is going to hit Reynold for a little bit, which is unfortunate. 
And Ren for the old glass is going to cause him to probably bleed. Which he resists, like a boss. Alright, what do we do? We can use Battlefield Medicine to heal our guy for one, which is useful, or Emboldening Vapors, so that we can start killing people off fairly quickly. I think Emboldening Vapors on our Grape Shot guy could be useful, so let's do that. Now, uh, if I go ahead and do Protection, he'll end up surviving better, which will help us in the long run. Uh, she's still hurting a little, but we should be okay. What does this do? Damage, increases our torch, and makes it so that way it's easier to hit a person. That's great and all. But I should probably Divine Grace heal him. So let's go ahead and do that. Unfortunately, it doesn't heal for very much. Just for three. Alright, now that I've got the chance to, I'm going to try to take aim for accuracy's sake. Now, next turn, I should be able to do Grape Shot and should hit the front three for a decent, reasonable amount of damage. Uh, he only took one damage, which is nice. My veins are on fire! Um, at this point, Divine Grace him again. There we go. That's the HP I'm looking for. We're going to get the 5 HP heal off of that, which is solid. He's going to get hit. What? What? Oh, such bullshit, but whatever. Now we get to go ahead and do stuff. Let's go ahead and Stunning Blow this guy. It's going to stun him, which is going to help us not take as much damage. Eldritch Push is going to push the Highwayman back probably too. Nope, he's going to resist it, which is nice. Um, at this point, we can actually attack with this guy, which would be solid. So, I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and play Grenade the Bastards in the back. It's going to hit both of them. Does it blight them? Yeah, it does. Okay, so that's going to help with the damage a bit. He's stunned, so he's just going to not deal with that. Um, Divine Grace on our friend in the front here, Renold, would be a good idea. Uh, she's going to get blighted for three, which is helpful. Eldritch Push. Is it going to actually push him back this time? Yes, it is. So he's quite far back, which is unfortunate for us. I don't think that he'll be able to use one of his abilities as a result. Ren for the Old Gods is now going to hit our healer. Uh, but no bleed on there, so that's pretty solid. I can still pistol shot, but I want to get back to where I want to be, so let's move back to where I want to be. Uh, emboldening Vapors, I think, on this guy would be help the most helpful thing right now. So that way when he tries to do damage, it's actually useful. Tempted Goblin's going to hit our healer again, stressing her out and dealing some damage, which is unfortunate as hell. Like, we have not been able to really get an attack off yet, because of their just seemingly stupid luck. Let's go ahead and try Zealous Accusation, see what it does. It's going to kill the guy in the front and give, them no give this skeleton in front a really bad time. Uh, she's going to go ahead and Eldritch Push. Hopefully it pushes her back. Uh, that would be ideal. And it does. That's great by my standards, as far as I'm concerned. He's going to take another bit. He's going to go ahead and tempt his goblet. Our Highwayman, Dismas, eh, he's not that stressed out, so it's not going to help. It's going to hurt us that much. Um, I could heal the guys in the front or I could heal her. She could probably use the heal the most. I'm going to go ahead and deal damage at the same time, though. Zap her and get some HP out of it. And a crit amount of HP while we're at it, which is nice. Grape Shot Blast. Finally getting a triple kill. That took way too long to happen. Like, that, that was the combo I was trying to set up the entire flipping time. Uh, I'm just happy that we finally got it off. And we're in a good situation. Uh, let's go ahead and open this business up. It's an ornate sarcophagus, and it is locked. I do not have a key, but let's try to open it. It's trapped. Shit. And he was blighted. Uh, well, we do have something for Blight, I'm pretty sure. Uh, let's go ahead and use that. That way we can open up our inventory. That's that's kind of nice to have. Alright. Now let's get on to the next room. We do have one combat ahead of us, uh, which I'm not too worried about. So let's go ahead and... Oh, there's a trap. See that on the ground? That's a trap. So we're going to go ahead and disarm that, uh, which helps reduce stress. And we're going to come across a fight right here. Do we surprise them? No, we do not. We do, however, put ourselves in a situation where I can try to zap a bunch of them. So I'm going to go ahead and zap him in the back, so that way the gunshots... Uh, stop being a thing. I, I swear that the people in the back do the most damage out of anybody. Like, he just dealt 7 damage across my entire team, which is a lot. He only dealt 4. Even if he bleeds, it's a little much. So let's see what else we... Do we get to go next? Yes, we do. Now, I could pistol shot, trying to go for the guy in the back. Uh, and kill him off. That could be a thing. Um, taking aim here might not be a bad idea either. So I'm going to go ahead and do take aim, so that way I can do a decent grape shot without having to deal with problems. Okay, he's going to take six right out of the gate, which is problematic to say the least. We're going to go ahead and battlefield heal him, so he's cured and gets a little bit of HP back in the process. Uh, we're going to go ahead and protect ourselves, so that way he can go ahead and tank a couple of hits without doing too badly on that front. Blanket fire is going to hit everybody for a lot of damage again. I'm really getting pissed off about that. Blanket fire again is going to crit our freaking healer. What the fuck? Alright, whatever. So we're going to go ahead and zap him. That's going to go ahead and heal her. I'm just, I'm really annoyed because, like, this game, this game, so this game's incredibly just unfair sometimes. I'm gonna go ahead and zealous accusation these two. It's not gonna hit either of them, unfortunately. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and play grenade the two in the back. It's gonna end up killing one and blighting the other. Nope, it's a resist. 
Uh, we are now going to Grape Shush, and it's going to hit all three of them for a decent amount of damage, which is really good. Somebody keeps texting me. I'm getting a little frustrated by that. All I don't want to hear about texting or anything. Blanket Fire coming out again. It's going to crit again, and someone's at Death's Door. So that causes a lot of problems for us. Uh, we have to heal them. Unfortunately, we're in a situation where we can't fucking heal for these reasons. We're going to go ahead and do a pistol shot there. It's going to hit. Blank of Fire, if it hits the guy in the back, he's dead. Uh, we have two at Death's Door now, and they can only heal themselves at this point. Um, let's go for the guaranteed heal at this point. It's going to heal her for five, which is good. Saves her ass. Uh, and Uppercut Slice is going to hit Reynold. Honestly, I wish I could run away, but I think this is the tutorial mission, so I can't. Or something stupid like that. Like, this has been fucking horseshit from start to finish. I'm a little bit pissed off, no lie. Uh, let's go ahead and try to smite one of these assholes, or at least do zealous accusation. Yeah, it's gonna hit both of them for six, which is nice. It puts them at a deadly spot. Yes, I know, you can be bandaged. But I can also battlefield medicine, which gets him off Death's door and stops him from bleeding. So, that's gonna save him for now. Uh, we're now in a situation where nobody's bleeding and the one heal doesn't do anything. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and... Uh, play grenade. We're gonna get rid of this guy in the back. Kill him off, finally. Good job, Pifu. Alright, Reynolds gonna take a shank. Slice and Dice is gonna end up hitting the both of them. Uh, open Veins is guy in the front. Kill him. Now we got one guy left. We're all extremely low, though. If there's any way I can get out of this. Uh, without having to worry about, like, losing a whole ton of stuff. As I've already gotten, a, like, some gold so and all that stuff. I don't want anymore. I, I, I want out. Is that allowed? Can I do that? Uh, exit. Nope. Return to game. How do I escape? That's a good question. Is H the key for running away? Let's see, click on a hero's move skill to change the party position. Entering doors, mouse wheel, to zoom, uh, objects. Right click on a hero to see the detailed character sheet. Click on inventory tab to examine supplies. Personality tab to see current hero's quirks and afflictions. Click on the retreat flag to abandon the quest. Abandon the quest! That's fine. At this point, I don't care. I don't want to lose anybody that I don't have to, you know? It's just, it's problematic. It's an issue. Jesus Christ, phone, would you shut the hell up? Alright, now with that said and done, uh, we did end up picking up a tiny bit of gold, it wasn't enough to recoup our losses, but we also got a number of heirlooms, so it could be worse. Uh, we got a couple of level ups, or like just things that happens uh, that happen here. So now, Reynold does not like being in the Warrens, he gets minus 20 stress resist, which is not good. Uh, Dismas is now even tougher! He's a hard to kill highwayman, he's got now a little bit more max HP. Pifu has now a fear versus the unholy, which is really shitty. And a Warren's Adventurer out of Obeo, so that's fantastic. They're all inc incredibly stressed, however, so that's not good for us. I can still see their angry faces as they stormed the manor. But I was dead before they found me. And the letter was on its way. Oh, whatever. Shut up, person. Alright, so now we got an incredibly stressed out group here. Let's go ahead and see who we can hire. Alright, we got an occultist. Hired. Uh, Leopard hired and a grave robber hired. We don't need it. another crusader, so I'm not going to hire that. Uh, it'd be nice to have another tank, but we've got another one in our leper. <sighs> so we got a decent amount of heroes here, and they're all various kinds of heroes, which is a good thing. Now, what to do? When you have a large number of people that are stressed out, you can tell here. The stress causes them to just do weird stuff in fights, and you don't want weird stuff dusted. in fights. The pews set straight. Look, I get, I get the, the point. Stop to the talking, table. dude. Um, once they're stressed out, weird stuff happens. They can either like give in and become like super paranoid, or um, start to become morbid, or other stuff. Or on the off chance that they become heroic, uh, they start to really benefit your party for the rest of that particular mission. Now, in this case, I don't like taking chances. So what I'm going to do is uh, take a look at our at our occultist. Does he have reconstruction? He does. Okay, that's good. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and toss Obea into one of these places. We're going to toss her into the penance hall, uh, I think. No, the cloister is slightly cheaper. Uh, maybe we should go ahead and spend some money. Uh, spend some heirlooms on making these places cheaper. Uh, let's go ahead and put it in the cloister. A man in a robe. So that way she can go in here and with take it easy for a little bit. Madness. Shut up. Seriously, he doesn't shut up. I mean, he's an awesome announcer, but come on, I'm trying to talk here. Uh, and then, you, so you, you can go to the Abbey. The Abbey has three different kinds of stress relief. Uh, that allows them to take a turn, uh, like a mission off, and do stuff. Now, this is the reason why you hate the Gravekeeper. The, or the Caretaker. He just takes a place, and you have to freaking deal with it. It's just like, oh, okay, sorry, 
gatekeeper dude. We're just okay, fine then, fuck you. Uh, let's go ahead and get this bar opened up. All manner of diversion uh, it increases the stress recovery. Okay, that's great. Who cross the threshold with um, I don't need to open up the brothel, so let's not do that. Now, Renault uh, needs some stress relief, as far as I'm concerned. So let's go ahead and put him in here. Wait, what? I need quiet communion with the all guiding light. Oh, great. I forgot. He's probably got a quirk or something. Let's see. God fearing. In town, we'll only pray for stress relief. Isn't that exactly where I put her? No, no, no. It's the transept. So he can go in here. That's good. Whatever. Now, that leaves us really low on supplies. But, uh, yeah, we'll do the best that we can. So these two are now in stress relief. We now have, still have some people left over, so that way we can actually, you know, do stuff. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and leave that for the next episode. Thank you everybody so much for watching. I hope you guys uh, are interested in this game. I have I like it. It's frustrating at times, but it's a good game. Um, I hope to be able to make a good series out of this, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take it easy.